FedEx Forum and the American Home Shield Studio. This is The Odds Couple on GrindCityMedia.com. Handicapping all the football action, here's Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker. Good people, welcome to the Odds Couple. Draft week, NFL draft week. It's talking season, lion season, draft season. We got it all figured out, though, here on the Odds Couple today. Welcome to the show. Glad you are with us. I'm Rob Fisher alongside Lang Whitaker. Hello, Lang. What's up, man? Good to see you, sir. I wore your Falcons That's today. A, it's, a big, it's a big draft for us. They got a big pick. They got yeah. a pick that could determine where the draft is going to be going uh, eight, after. Eight picks. They got a lot of picks. Yeah. They need them. They can't afford to sign. If they draft eight players, they cannot afford to sign all eight players. So... Makes things very see interesting. What, see what happens. Yeah. John Roser is in the house as well. Hello, Johnny. Hello. Good to see you, sir. Your 49ers you yeah, are a big pick in this draft as well. It's what everybody's talking about. Yeah. Is what are they going to do at number three? Um, we'll see. I think it's uh, the Mac attack, the Big Mac, yeah. the second best quarterback in this draft. Behind Trevor Lawrence, Trevor right? Lawrence, yes. Behind Trevor just wanted to make sure. Yes. CJ Hurt here as well. Hello, CJ. What's going on? How's everything going? I can't believe you guys are going to make me defend Justin Fields today. And by you guys, I mean Rosa. <laughs> I like Justin Fields. <laughs> I love Justin Set. Fields. I will say, I, I say second best quarterback in the draft. I, look, it, maybe, Troy, maybe Trey Lance is. I don't know. I've, I've never seen him play football, so I can't really comment on that. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Um, but, but it'll be and interesting. But he can't, but, he, but, but, but uh, I mean, it demerited. I mean, he did come from the same school as Carson Wentz. So, you know, there's that. Yeah. Um, this draft is all about the quarterback. Yeah. Uh, we're expecting quarterback, quarterback, quarterback uh, with the first three picks. And um, it'll be interesting then when that fourth one goes, uh, how quickly he will go at that point, how many will be taken in the first round. But it's all about the quarterback this year. It seems like that quarterbacks, for a few years now, we've seen them start to develop them in college and develop pro style quarterbacks. And now all of a sudden, all these pro style quarterbacks are ready. I mean, Lance didn't even play last year, and, and, <laughs> and he's going to be a top pick in this draft. And we see all these guys, Sewell, they didn't even play. A bunch of guys who didn't play right. for a year are going to be top ten picks in this draft. It's crazy. I know more about Lance. That I learned more about Lance than I've learned from any other piece of media in the last year. This week on Instagram when I got a targeted ad for a mattress company, and they had a Trey Lance or some sort of sleep number. I don't even know what it was. They had this Trey Lance video that was incredible. It told his whole life story. It interviewed his like, college coaches. And in the middle of it, they talked about having the right mattress to sleep on. But Really? I mean, I guess I don't even know what the point of the thing was, but it was great. For I, this show. That's what I, the point I was. I learned a lot about I, I learned that he started, I believe, 16 games is the year he played and uh, had zero turnovers for the entire year. Yeah. At quarter, which is unbelievable. See, there you go, Roser. Yeah, now you know about Trey Lance. Well, Get on no, Instagram, well, that, that's that's not the most important stuff that, oh. about Trey Lance. The, the most important thing that there, there are rumors swirling that he is dating oh. the daughter of, in my opinion, the best sports radio host in the entire country. Well, in Colin Cowell. <laughs> oh, oh, I was say Rob's daughter is pretty young. I was gonna say, yeah, that'd <laughs> yeah, that, be weird. That, well, that, that's called jail. So. <laughs> I mean, uh, Colin Coward, you just called the greatest sports radio person in America? I think he is the best like sports radio that does sports right. radio. Yeah, I think it's well, by far. I don't think there's anybody even close to as good as he is. I'll take John Wall. John Wall, the basketball player? He and Coward have a little history. Oh, yeah, 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 I know. I'd take anybody locally over Coward. No, you wouldn't. I would. No, you wouldn't. Almost everybody locally over Coward. <laughs> Almost um, The... <laughs> It's going to be about the quarterbacks. Trevor Lawrence is going to be number one. That, that seems assured. 10,000 to one odds. So, yeah, I, I think he's going to be the number yeah. one pick in the draft. He talks. Uh, there was a controversy, uh, apparently, on whether or not he loves the game enough, uh, whether or not, or not he wants to win enough. Uh, well, here is the number one overall pick, Trevor Lawrence, talking about being a competitor. I don't feel like I have anything to prove, not because of what I've done or, or the success I've had, but just my personality. That's not how I operate. I, I'm, you know, I'm internally motivated. I'm not looking for, I'm not looking for things to motivate me. You know, I have it all, all inside. You know, I got goals, aspirations, dreams to be the best I can be, and truly really just love the game. Uh, and that was kind of the message. Was more, I just love playing the game. Uh, I'm not mo- motivated, mo- motivated by other people. 
Um, it's really just an internal motivation, and I don't put my whole worth in football. And I know people take that and spin it and turn it into whatever that whatever they want, but it just means if football went away, I, you know, I'd find something else to do, and I'd still I'd still have a great life and enjoy my life. But football is where my heart's at. It's what I love to do. It's what I've loved since I was six years old. Um, this has been my dream forever, and, and I really believe no one works harder than me. So I think you can have both. I think when people want it to be one or the other, um, but I think for me, that's been one of the healthiest things is is realizing that this isn't the only thing in the world. I think he was asked a, cri- a trick question. Was he on the set of Sprockets? That like, was on Sprockets. I, I, yes. I think he also had. Uh, I'm, I'm picturing um, an ocean behind him with like a surfboard, also with right the hair there. flowing, yeah, like a right guard commercial. Like and, and you know, and you know, like <laughs> at some, and, and they had to edit that because in the middle of it, at some point, he turned around and goes, "Sick wave, Brad, sick wave." <laughs> I don't know. Something about this Cringe, whole, bruh. listening to that long quote about how much he loves football but that seemed completely unconvincing. <laughs> the fact that there's that, there's this whole Urban Meyer situation, then there's like Jacksonville. Like the whole thing just to me seems like it's setting up a little funny. To be a disaster? Yeah. Uh, or just not to be mean, like, you know He already a, has the a, playbook, so not to be a Tom Brady winning 25 titles in New England. Like, it feels like, yeah. yeah. Well, that's because Urban Meyer's going to be there like three years yeah. before he has that health be problems. Like, well, just, it depends when they lose, when yeah, they yeah. start to lose games. then Well, that'll probably be right away. Then he'll have those problems. Uh, the 49ers have a big pick. Number one seems set. Number two seems set with Zach Wilson as well. And then what will the 49ers do at number three? Most mock drafts today have Mac Jones. He's actually the odds-on favorite now. Or no, he's not the odds-on favorite, but everybody has him in the mock draft. Justin Fields is still the odds-on favorite to be the third pick. Is that, has that changed? Yeah. Is Mac it Mac Jones Mac now? Jones is like the heavy favorite, I okay, think. Okay, Mac I Jones believe. is the favorite to be number three. But Justin Fields was the favorite for a long time. Now he's not. Uh, but here is uh, John Lynch. He is the general manager of the 49ers talking about he's going to give his coach a little decision-making on this one. Everyone has, you know, in your contract, you do this. The draft is, is mine. But I, I told Kyle from the beginning that this is, he and I are doing this together. And when it comes to quarterbacks, I'd be foolish, I believe. Um, we have a head coach who's also our offensive play caller. I will always defer to him. And, uh, you know, what's cool about that is that Kyle, I think, respects my opinion enough. He always wants it. And uh, ultimately, we arrive at decisions uh, we will, and come Thursday, we'll have a pick that uh, hopefully makes everyone proud, but that will be judged in years to come, and uh, we've done our best to make sure that it's a great decision for this franchise. Hmm. Roser, what do we know for sure? Quarterback? Uh, Mac Jones is minus 250. Trey Lance is plus 300. Justin Fields is plus 400 to be the number third over, okay. number three overall pick. Um, he, might, he might as well just said, if this pick doesn't work out, it's Kyle's fault. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, the whole quote was yeah. just him like, yeah. basically, blame. This, yeah. is, this is who Kyle wants. We're yeah. going with who Kyle, yes, he asked me our opinion. Um, he's asked our, our scouts their opinions, but uh, this is Kyle's pick. This is who he wants to be the quarterback of the franchise going forward. Um, I think he would be fine with Jimmy, too, going forward, except the problem is Jimmy's never been able to stay healthy. I mean, he wins tons of games when he plays. He just doesn't ever stay healthy. Um, I, I, I'm going to stick with Mac Jones. That's originally why they traded up was Mac Jones. In recent days, they said Trey Lance throughout the whole interview process has been, like, he is very, very impressive, Trey, uh, Trey Lance is, but I, I think they're going to stick with their first instinct, and that's Mac Jones. I, uh, there's a quote I wanted to read. It was on ESPN.com today about this draft pick uh, from a high-ranking NFC executive who said, Kyle Shanahan gives the 49ers the edge, and Mac is the warrior to situate that edge. Oh. Then, Then added a coach in the NFC with ties to Shanahan. Mac is basically all the QBs Kyle has coached rolled into one. Kirk Cousins, Matt Schaub, Matt Ryan. You're going to use the number three pick on the combination of Kirk Cousins, Matt Ryan, and Matt Schaub. I would have, I would have felt a lot better if they just said he's the next Matt Ryan. Yeah. That's, he won an MVP. Yeah, you're right. No, yeah, won that, a lot of games, put up great yeah, numbers and like everything. That, but Matt that, Schaub. But that's, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> Matt Schaub wasn't bad for a while, and Kirk Cousins has been at the playoffs. He's fine. Cousins isn't awesome, but he's fine. If, if No, no. Because if, if they told you with the number three pick in the NFL draft, uh, you're, you're going to take a quarterback, and your quarterback's going to have Matt Ryan's career. Yeah. Dude, you would sign up for it in a heartbeat. Absolutely. But because what you told never you? know what you're going to get out of that. There are so many guys. Go look at all the guys that have been drafted oh, in the first round of but quarterbacks. What if they told so you the, I mean, the, don't you think the ceiling is probably higher 
for I think Justin Jones, Fields or Trey Lance. I think Mac Jones' Jones? ceiling is higher. I think Mac Jones' ceiling is <laughs> He's higher. Stretching as he says yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my logic. Let me stretch it out. I, I mean, look, I, I I feel like the ceiling's higher for either of those two guys than it is for Mac. I think Mac Jones is what he is. He's great. We didn't do any of this Clearly. stuff with Tua last year. Or Joe Burrow. We didn't do any of it with Tua. Mm. None of it with Tua. Why? Mac Jones is better than Tua. All the numbers say he's better than Tua. His receivers say he's better than Tua. Why? We didn't do it last year. Okay. I well, I didn't believe in Tua. No. Yeah, no. I know. Oh, you. Yeah, I'll, you know, I'll I'll I give you props, Fish. You've I'll been on that one. one. <laughs> You've been on that one. Yeah. This is this is a, this is a guy who played for Steve Sarkeesian. Think about all the quarterbacks Steve Sarkeesian has had. Steve Sarkeesian said, "I gave more of my offense than I have ever given to any other quarterback I've had. I gave more of it to Mac Jones." in a season than I did to any other quarterback I've ever had. Rosers and he processed all of it. Rosers got me convinced, CJ. I'm big on it. He's, they, they, there's no way he's bad. There's no way he's a bad there's, quarterback. Wait, whoa, there's no way yeah. he's bad? No way. no way. Zero percent chance he's bad. He's Zero. playing for Alabama with all of the studs over there, and they're playing against teams in the SEC who just can't keep – in college football, honestly, who just can't keep up with that type of firepower. Right, I don't think I'm not sold on Mac Jones, and I don't care what Sarkeesian says. I'm not sure he's a good coach. We've seen him coaching the NFL and ruin a franchise, offensively speaking. So well, I'm not, that, I'm that, not that, sold. That's what he was Sarkeesian drunk all the time. <laughs> so he's not drunk anymore. <laughs> so he's okay, like, yeah, he's got a lot better. Mac, he's not Mac, I, mean, Mac I think comes, that matters. Like Mac, that Mac matter? comes on, and he just spits like, the bottle down. Like, it, I see what you're saying now. A good quarterback can make you stop drinking, and Mac may if Mac may see. No, no, well, that's why he got. That's why he got fired at U.S. That's why he left USC. But that was back in the, those days, the USC days and everything. Washington and USC I would look, I, I just think if, if I'm drafting the number three pick overall, if you want to get a good so, – like, you don't think they could get Mac Jones at four or five? No, or? The, the point is is to trade with, with, – because I thought the same thing. The point was, okay, we know these guys are going one, two. We're going to go to three so we ensure that we get the guy we want. Nobody can come in and jump over us. Nobody can do that. Uh, because the Panthers were mentioned for a while of wanting to do that too. The Denver Broncos have been mentioned wanting to do that. That that's because I thought the same thing. I'm like, dude, you didn't have to jump up to number three to get Mac Jones. But then the thought is, okay, well, what if somebody else falls in love with him? And what if they come and jump over you? This way, you ensure nobody jumps over you. All right, nobody yeah. jumping over anybody. We'll take a break uh, here on the Odds Couple when we come back. Lance Taylor is going to join us. We'll get his thoughts. He's down there in Birmingham. He's he's seen Mac Jones. He'll play tell a us bit. about the Mac attack. That's right. That's right. And Steve Sarkeesian. <laughs> and Steve Sarkeesian. Tua. <laughs> and Tua. That's yeah. coming up next here on the Odds Couple on Grind City Media. Yeah, I've always thought maybe a fun dunk contest wrinkle would be just to dunk on people. <laughs> get instead of jumping over them, have them stand there and make a half-hearted attempt to block your dunk and then just destroy them. Okay, yeah, but then who's gonna sign up for that? Who's like, yep, yeah, I'll be the poster. Join Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Ray Johnson, every Thursday as we debate the hottest topics in the NBA. IMHO on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and our social channels. Once a week, get your basketball fix with Talkin' Grizz featuring me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, and media from around the NBA as we discuss draft topics, prospects, and more. Connect with Grind City Media on all their social channels, subscribe to Grind City Media YouTube, and follow Grind City Media on Twitter and Instagram to stay up to date with all things Grizzlies. I will say this, and I, you know, this started a long time ago in my life. I have a love of potatoes. I never thought that I would get recognized for my love of potatoes. So this is our first step. Our next mm -hmm. step is trying to get to the Idaho Potato Bowl where Megan can be in charge of dumping the giant Gatorade bin of french fries on the winning After coach. After I have eaten some of them. Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan. Live daily at 8 a.m. on GrindCityMedia.com. GrindCityMedia.com, live from FedEx Forum and the American Home Shield Studio. Now, here's more of the Odds Couple, Rob Fisher and Lane Whitaker. Hey, don't miss one of the newest uh, Grind City Media shows, the newest Grind City Media show. That's Rise and Grind, each and every morning with Jessica Benson and Megan Triplett. It's a great show. It, it's a fantastic show. Wonderful. They, and CJ's on the show yeah. uh, as well. He's but Jessica a big part really of the, carries it. Who? Jessica. She's hilarious. Okay. Well, man, now you're trying to get Megan mad. We got Jessica mad, and now you're trying to make Megan mad? No, no. I, I just think, you know. I think they're both excellent. Okay. Uh, with a fresh, fun, and energetic double shot of morning vibes. 
Check out Rise and Grind uh, each and every morning. GrindCityMedia.com, Grind City Media on YouTube or via the official Grizzlies mobile app. Catch Jessica and Megan live, or you can download each episode daily and subscribe at iTunes, Spotify, or SoundCloud today. I think they're both fantastic and do amazing, amazing work. Um, we're talking about the NFL draft here today on the Odds Couple. Justin Fields, well, we talked one, two, and three, and we didn't talk Justin Fields. Here is Justin Fields uh, when asked about why quarterbacks from the Ohio State University have not succeeded in the NFL. Um, I'm not sure, you know. Um, I don't know those guys personally. I don't know their work ethic. I don't know what they were taught. Um, I know, you know, Dwayne got taught a little bit similar to, you know, what Coach Day was teaching, but um, in, all, in all honesty, um, I think I'm different than those guys. Uh, I know my work ethic is uh, unmatched. Um, and just my dedication and my passion to wanting to be great is, is just another level. So um, in terms of, you know, of course, the past quarterbacks, I, I can't control that. And, of course, if, you know, the, the only similarity that me and those guys have is that we, we wore the same uniform. So if, if, if they want to say that, then, then that's on them. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to focus on myself and focus on uh, continue to, continuing to uh, get better in every aspect of the game. What makes Justin Fields different? He went to Georgia. I was going to say, the only similarity is the uniform. Also, like, the offense they ran and the yeah. Yeah, yeah. teams they played against. I love Justin systems. Fields. I think he's going to be great. He was I totally misused at Georgia, and I think in the NFL he has a chance to be really spectacular. Yeah, he does. Huh? Like, I mean, he's got all the talent in the world. He's got everything. He's no Mac world. Jones. No, but, I don't think he is. But I don't think he's as good as Mac Jones. Oh, boy. As for, for the NFL, I don't. Joining us now, goes to the roundtable on WJOX in Birmingham. You can get him on Twitter at the Lance Taylor. Get his picks daily. Lance'slock.com. Lance Taylor joins us here on The Odds Couple. Hello, Lance. Hey, fellas. Uh, I hope I'm not showing my age by saying this, but there was a day when I used to get checked out of elementary school to watch the draft during the week when it used to uh, go off at 10 a.m. in the morning. I don't know if you guys ever remember a time <laughs> no, when the NFL I, did that. I, I, I just remember when uh, they the, the, when I was growing up, it was always Saturday morning it started, yeah. and literally it would go all freaking day with Paul Tagliabue up there. All day. Yeah, like they, it they was, was like forever. Chris there was literally a time where ESPN, when they were searching for programming, was they were carrying the NFL draft. It was during the week, and it kicked off in the morning. Ugh. Wow, I, yeah, I remember this. And this is back to like the Tagliabue days that I remember. Where that's when teams had fifteen minutes instead of ten minutes to make the. Fr- I mean, the oh, first yeah. round would take like six. Hours. The first round would start at like nine a.m. and it wouldn't be over until like four in the afternoon. Oh, and so, those- uh, yeah, I remember that too. I, I think mine were the Pete Rozelle days. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I think you know the the evolution of this draft is pretty insane. I mean, I don't know if you guys agree. You know, we started to go through it today and. You know, I think you can make an argument. It's almost, as far as, like, excitement and viewership, it's almost a top ten event. I mean, obviously, oh, it's awesome. you know, you've got Super Bowls and all the playoff games and NBA Finals and Final Four Masters. But, I mean, I, it's, it's close to a top ten event. Oh, I 100% agree. 100% yeah. agree, yes. Uh, Lance, uh, looks like we're going quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. Who's going to be the third one? It's going to be Mac Jones. I mean, watching how the numbers have moved in Vegas just today, it's it's been pretty insane. You know, I... There was a point last week where Justin Fields was kind of a slight favorite to be that number three overall. But I think the three, the, the first three picks are really predictable. I mean, obviously Trevor's going to go one, and Zach Wilson will go two to the Jets, and it looks like Mac Jones will go three. Kyle Shanahan's going to get his guy. I mean, right now he's minus 400. I mean, you know, just in baseball terms, I mean, that's, that's Kershaw versus, you know, four years ago a 61 Marlins team. Yeah. Well, you tell me what do, what do you since you you live there you cover you cover that Alabama team you talk to all those coaches. I think Mac Jones is the second best quarterback in the draft, and I'm not saying that just because I'm a 49ers fan. I but but if the Niners somehow take Justin Fields, then I do oh, love Justin, Justin Fields. Fields will be the second best. No, quarterback I, no, 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 he won't be. But I do love <laughs> Justin Fields because he made me a lot of money when he was uh, playing at Ohio State. <laughs> Trey Lance, I have no idea because I've never seen him play. But I think Mac Jones is the second best quarterback in this draft. I think we uh, under, you know, I, I think I, we underrate your ability to read a defense and make quick decisions, and I think he does that better than anybody else in this draft. Well, you know, people continue to say all of these weapons around Mac Jones. Tua actually had more weapons when you go back to what he had with Ruggs and Judy. And the thing I know about Mac Jones, look, it's an abbreviated sample size. He was a starting quarterback for one year. Two things jump out. He throws one of the most accurate balls I've ever seen, and that is obviously key when you get to the next level. The other thing, nothing flusters the guy. 
you know, when he makes a mistake, he comes right back, and, and it's like nothing ever happens. So he's got such a short memory, and I think for a kid, you know, playing for Nick Saban, um, that type of stage, I think those are two, uh, two intangibles you need to be successful. You know, personally, I think Trevor Lawrence, although, you know, I don't know if Trevor ever had the year Mac Jones had, and Trevor, you know, had as much talent or more around him at Clemson than, than Mac Jones did. Um, I like Zach Wilson a lot. I mean, there's, you know, in today's NFL, his ability to move, his ability to throw an accurate ball, you know, on the run. Um, he did have the wild plays that maybe Mac Jones didn't have. But I don't, I don't have a problem with ultimately saying Mac Jones could be the best quarterback in this draft, and I'll base it on this. Trevor's going to what is perceived as a garbage organization in Jacksonville. I know Shad Khan's trying to put money into it. Urban Meyer seems to be a coach that will win wherever he goes. We know Zach Wilson is going to a garbage organization with the Jets. Mac Jones is just the extra ingredient to what is one of the best rosters in football right now. I mean, I think if you start Mac Jones, everybody stays healthy on that roster. I don't think they can win less than ten games. No, that's the, that's that's the, that's the thing. Like the, the, they're ready. Like San Francisco's re- like it's no rookie quarterback has like really walked into this kind of situation. Like they, the roster's built. Like I mean, it's ready to go. You signed Trent Williams. You got your left tackle. You got Nick Bosa coming back from injury. Uh, you've got the receivers in Ayuk and Debo Samuel. You've got Kittle. Like the yeah, the roster's ready to win. So if they don't win, it'll be Mac Jones's fault. Well, they're good as long no, or they don't stay healthy. I mean, the whole freaking team got hurt this year. I mean, and they yeah. I mean, let's keep in mind we were going to pick third. We were going to pick twelfth. The whole team got hurt, and they still were going to pick twelfth. They weren't going to pick third. They traded up for third. I'm a Rams guy, and the Rams now they've got another number one overall quarterback in Matt Stafford. But this one's legit, and you guys were kind of laughing. If if Fields is the guy, Roser will fall in love with him. It's like I had to adopt Jared Goff, but I knew it was never going to work to the level I wanted it to. But even with them getting Matt Stafford, a borderline elite quarterback with Sean McVay, I still think San Francisco is the team to beat in the NFC West. And I actually believe that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to stay healthy. I think he's going to have a career year. So I think it's going to be an interesting situation for Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch moving forward. I, Unless, I, yeah. for whatever reason, Garoppolo gets hurt or, 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 or he's they traded trade him. Uh, tomorrow. Yeah, or they, yeah. Or they trade him. If, he, if they go in next year with Jimmy as their starting quarterback, I, I agree. As long as he stays healthy, he's going to have an awesome year because he's going to be pissed off the whole time. Hmm. All right. Kyle Pitts, over under selection five and a half. Uh, the only thing, if you're betting the over on the five and a half, Lance, I would imagine you're thinking Atlanta's trading their pick. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, you know, I thought this thing was locked in. You know, we know one through three seemed to be locked. I thought Kyle Pitts was locked at four. And it seems like there's been some discussion over the last couple of days, and we had Chris Mortensen on the show to talk about it. He said, look, it's not a slam dunk, but there's a chance that Arthur Blank and the Atlanta Falcons will go quarterback of the future. Um, I just don't know why you pass on Kyle Pitts. I mean, we all saw it this past year. When he's out there, he is a complete matchup nightmare. And I think at the next level, if you put him out there with a healthy Julio, Calvin Ridley, um, Matt Ryan is a quarterback that's, you know, 36 is not that old. He doesn't look like the Matt Ryan that we saw four years ago. But, you know, I've seen what Arthur Smith was able to do with a guy like Ryan Tannehill. So maybe there's a reinvention of Matt Ryan back to the MVP days, and Kyle Pitts would be an incredible weapon. Right now he's minus 150 to go number four overall. I would have to play that under. I still think Atlanta's got to have common sense here. you got to go with the best player on the board, and then that's going to easily be Kyle Pitts. And then Justin Fields is the other one, which is interesting for his draft position as well, the over-under there, because you wonder – it almost, again, comes down to Atlanta. If Atlanta's going to make a move and someone moves up to four to get a quarterback, it would be Justin Fields. So it seems like both of those could all be based on whether a trade is made or not. Look, I, I tend to agree with you guys. I think Justin Fields is going to be pretty good. But let's just say that that he is um, what we've seen before from Ohio State quarterbacks. And let's say Kyle Pitts ends up being Travis Kelsey or George Kittle. And you've got a Dwayne Haskins on your hand. I, I can't even imagine. Now, this would be so Atlanta Falcons. I mean, you guys know the organization uh, back and forth, and, and nothing could be more defining than blowing a 28-3 lead in the second half of the Super Bowl. But if you pass on Pitts, you take Justin Fields, and he becomes Dwayne Haskins and is not a starting quarterback in this league in three years, and Pitts is completely dominating and taking a team to a Super Bowl, um, I don't know how you could live that now. And Panay Sewell is another interesting one. If everything stays put and the teams stay where they're at, 
you could see him going to five, but that number is at five and a half. And again, if Atlanta were to move for a quarterback, that could change everything. If if if, if at five, if Cincinnati wants to change uh, and, and make a move with somebody, then maybe that team would go after a quarterback. So I I, I think Sewell's also would depend on draft. If everything stays the same, he's probably under that five and a half. Well, you know, if I'm Cincinnati, I already saw my franchise quarterback get hurt last year in Joe Burrow, and I'm doing everything I can to protect him, and I think they've got decent weapons. You know, it's a pivotal year for Zach Taylor, but you look at Tyler Boyd, he's he's developing into a really good wide receiver, T. Higgins. You've got Joe Mixon in that backfield. I think you need that left tackle of the future. I go to Sewell, but what's interesting is he goes from a heavy favorite to go number five overall to Cincinnati. Now your favorite is Jamar Chase, you know, repairing. Uh, the Bolitnikoff winner from 2019 and the Heisman Trophy winner in Joe Burrow. So Jamar Chase right now is minus 140 to go number five overall to Cincinnati. Bottom Cincinnati, you know, it's exciting to have another playmaker in that fold, but I think I'd be more confident having what could be that left tackle for the next 10 to 12 years protecting uh, Joe Burrow. Yeah, I mean, knowing the way Joe Burrow's season ended last year, I think he might be all for getting up a left tackle. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you would think he would be. Yeah. I mean, no doubt about it. Um, Lance, uh, anything else stick out as far as uh, uh, betting-wise on the draft or uh, things that you look at for the draft that you might want to get a little action in? Uh, is, is it an exciting thing to bet? Uh, you know, it is, Rob. You know, last was the first time I've really ever bet on the NFL draft just because I think we were all starving in the middle of the pandemic to right. gamble <laughs> on something. <laughs> Um, and I actually had a pretty successful first round playing some of these over-unders from conferences, positions. Um, and I think, you know, some of the interesting props are, you know, first round totals. You've got ACC right now. Uh, the over-under is five and a half. The Big Ten, six and a half. The SEC is 12 and a half. But Alabama is that one on their own at five and a half. Um, and it's minus 200 to go over. And, you know, there's, there's four guys that are slam dunks when you look at um, Mac Jones, Devontae, Jalen Waddell, Patrick Sertain. And, you know, the fifth player becomes that, that guy, you know, is, is it going to be Christian Barmore? Um, could Landon Dickerson sneak in there? Najee Harris is going to be the first running back. Five and a half seems like a big number, but Vegas seems like they know something at minus 200. So, although I would lean under the five and a half for Alabama right now, the way Vegas says, they, they, they're, they're saying to play the over five and a half. Wow. So I guess this offseason, now when SEC media days come, Alabama just lost too much, right? They can't come back? Next year, of course, yes. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Uh, I, I, I struggled in the last two weeks, Lance, with baseball. How's baseball going for you at Lance's Lock dot com? Yeah, Rob, it's actually going really well yeah. as we speak right now. Twelve games over five hundred, right around the sixty percent mark. Nice. So, crushing baseball. Very nice of Dunning. You could get picks every single day at Lance's Lock dot com. Yeah, Lance'sLock.com, 90 bucks a month, really simple. You get everything, the NBA, Major League Baseball, 3 bucks a day, simple math. Uh, jump on board. We take Venmo now. Just check it out. You get a free play every day, Lance'sLock.com. That's fantastic. Lance, always a pleasure, man. Enjoy the draft. We'll talk again real soon. Yeah, thanks, guys. See All right, up. man. Lance Taylor joining us from Birmingham as the uh, NFL draft getting underway. Uh, and Mac Jones. A lot of Mac Jones on the show uh, talk today here on, on the program. Um I, I love Kyle Pitts, and as yeah. I've told you guys before, to me, I think you know when you look offense and you look skill position guys, when it comes to winning championships, to me it's about two positions, quarterback and tight end, period. It's not running back. It's not wide receiver. It's quarterback and tight end. You've got good ones there. you you got real good shot to win, and, and I think having a guy like Kyle Pitts, he, he could be one of the best someday. I think that's what the Falcons are going to end up doing. I mean, they're stuck with Ryan for at least – the next two years because of salary cap reasons and stuff so if you got matt ryan and they can't if they were going to trade julio jones there's been some talk of that but they can't do that until june i think because of cap reasons also so if you're arthur smith and and terry fontenot and you get in there and you're going to like even if you think let's rebuild this thing maybe you say well look we got matt ryan two more years let's just make a run at it you draft kyle pitts if it doesn't work out you still got a a young tight end who's going to be there for the next decade so then you could trade Julio a year from now, two years from now, if you're going to do that. So I, I think they go Pitts if they don't trade back and, and try to do something there. But I, I think Pitts is probably the best move they could make. And gives Matt Ryan that Tony Gonzalez-type tight end who, who can block and, and catch and run and do everything else. And 
gives Arthur Smith another player who can make plays. Like that's what he's really good at is finding guys who make plays, getting them the ball, and letting them do their thing. And so we'll see. That I mean, he's Pitts is a stud, and if you have if if, if you if, if you do keep Julio, if you find a way to keep him, and you have Julio, and you got Calvin Ridley, and then you got Kyle Pitts. I mean, that is just <laughs> Mike Davis. I mean, that is an embarrassment of riches. Yeah. Lions like, had a pretty good history of tight ends. <laughs> too. Sure. Really who was the other receiver you had last year that was awesome too? What's the guy's name? Why am I drawing a blank on this guy? The other one. Oh my God! There was a third. He. I know it because of fantasy football. Yes. And I cannot think God, of man's what was name. his name? I don't know who you're talking about. Because we didn't have a third receiver. who was awesome last year. Yes, you did. This guy was good. Oh my gosh! Falcons wide receivers. While Rose is looking that up, you usually trade back because you don't think there's enough talent at that position. Russell to Gage. That value. Russell, Russell Gage. Gage. Yes, that guy. Lang, good too. he was awesome. He I was so. awesome. Apparently that guy so. was really good. He was good. okay. He was like a slot receiver. He was did stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, he's on the same field as Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley. The guy was pretty good, though. What's weird is, you know who else they signed in the offseason? It was Cordero Patterson. Which I oh, don't really. Well, I hate for special, like teams. special teams. Special teams. Special teams. Guy, yeah. At this point, is he just a kick returner? I yeah, think and like a mainly. running back, you throw tosses too. I mean, he was the Bears like featured back on most plays last year. Right. So <laughs> that's because the Bears were terrible. Yes. Yeah, and so is their coach. Um, what? What were you? Another another day. Uh, what were you saying? Now you're trading you down. You don't you don't trade down unless you think the value at that position isn't worth it. Right. And Kyle Pitts is absolutely worth it. Yeah. For for all the reasons you guys said, and then. Stop and think for a second. If Kyle Pitts is running routes in the middle of the field and Julio's on the outside, like what, what is your safety going to do? Somebody's going to be open, and we make football a whole lot more complicated than it needs to be. You need to force mis- mismatches and create opportunities for studs in space. Kyle Pitts is a stud. He's a mismatch waiting to happen. It's, it's easy money right <laughs> and there. And you didn't even bring up Calvin Ridley, who's also a oh, number one receiver. Why did I forget about Calvin Ridley? Ridley's also Ridley, a number what, one what receiver. What are your safeties yeah. going to do? Two safeties can't cover those three. Yeah. And your linebacker can't run with Kyle Pitts. What, what is going to no. happen? No, Kyle Pitts' quarterback was a guy who at times was called Trash as a nickname. Kyle Trask. Oh, oh you mean Trash? Who yeah. called, no, that's rude. So nobody would, <laughs> who would call him that? Hmm. I believe it was on this show. Roser. I never called him that. <laughs> he's mad. He's no Mac Jones. Kyle Trask. Man, and now all of a sudden he's going to get drafted. He's that guy in this draft that people look at, well, we could always get a quarterback later. That's Kyle Trask that everybody is talking about. Probably uh, could be, could be, late first round pick. Doubtful. More likely second round pick for Kyle Trask of the Florida Gators. Here he is talking about his pro day. People I've talked to, the perception is probably someone who's they're not very mobile or can't move around in the pocket. Um, and that was one of the main things I wanted to, you know, focus on out here is really show that my burst out of the pocket, my you know little intricate, you know, pocket movements um, that can really help my game. Uh, you know, body's feeling good, arms feeling good, and I just thought we we came out here and executed exactly, you know, pretty pretty close to how we wanted to, and you know, hopefully it'll help us in the end. What do you want the NFL to know about you, Kyle? Uh, just someone that you know, is going to come to work every single day. Um, is never going to complain. Is going to you know just show up on time and you know put in the extra work and be a great teammate. All right. Unath- unathletic people talk about the subtleties <laughs> of movement in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> he said some of the intricate footwork in the pocket or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. All right, good luck. It matters to, uh, a ton, Kyle. Trask. And an unathletic quarterback's the best quarterback of all time. Oh, yeah, how about that on a pro day? Okay, it's your pro day, Kyle Trask. Go throw the ball to Kyle Pitts for yeah. an hour. Yeah. All right, cool. Fun stuff. That's, all right, that's let's good roll. for me. Let's sure, go. It'll be, sure, it'll be just like that in the NFL. Yeah. How about this? A good wide receiver draft uh, potential, probably unlikely, but three guys who have the talent to be top ten picks in the draft. The last time there were three top 10 wide receivers taken was 2017. How about these names? Corey Davis, Mike Williams, and John Ross. Hmm. Mike Williams can play if he just doesn't hurt. Like Mike Williams can play. I think John Ross owns the Dolphins, doesn't he? 
I thought it's that's, that's, that's Stephen Ross. Oh. oh, I thought he was a host of like uh, roasts and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that him? Yeah. No, that's um, Jeff Ross. Jeff Ross. Yeah. Um, John Ross, Corey Davis, Mike Williams all went in the top ten in 2017. Uh, wide receiver is one of those positions you can get them later. I mean, I look at a guy like Devonte Smith, and when you see him in mock drafts at midway or even second half of this first round, I'm thinking, man, he's going to go to a good team. He goes to a good team. I think Najee Harris goes to a good team. Travis Etienne can go to a really good yeah. team. And those guys can thrive where they're going to be drafted. I think people forget how good Jamar Chase is because he didn't play last year. Like right. He's an incredible guy. And then Jalen Waddle was hurt. Like He was, he was uh, by all accounts, at Alabama ahead of Devontae yes. Smith on the yeah. depth chart. Yeah. So. I, I, the, yeah. the only thing I don't get about Devontae, the, 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 the Devontae Smith thing is literally every scout, every person that talks about Devontae Smith, they say, dude, you are drafting Marvin Harrison. I'm like... So why is this even a debate that he's not the first wide receiver taken if you were getting Marvin Harrison here? In like a top eight pick. <laughs> like yeah. what, are, like what are we doing here? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. I think he's amazing. The Slim Reaper. The Slim Reaper. Yeah. Yeah, yes, give I him like that nickname that. because uh, Kevin Durant didn't like it. So yes. yeah, so Kevin it, Durant doesn't like him. anything. That, he's that's... soft. Oh, sorry. Ooh. Oh, no. You're going to come after me now like you did Rappaport? Ooh. Oh, Rappaport's a soft one on that, though. Rappaport does that to everybody. Yeah, but how? Dude, could you get on to Rappaport, and that dude then like calls his lawyers and like threatens to sue you. And it's like, yo, dude, you can't go on and talk all this mad crap, and then I respond to you, and then you come back with lawyers. How like, good was it though when he went on with Shannon and Skip and acted like he was crying and talking about my dog Wheezy? No one's looking at Wheezy at the dog park anymore. And the lady at the coffee shop called me Cupcake, and he was like crying. And Skip's like, "Why do you think people are calling you Cupcake?" And he's like, "I'm kidding, Skip." <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if Rosa ever starts a podcast, we should call it Talking Mad Crap. <laughs> yeah. Talking, talking mad, mad Crap. Talking I'd mad listen. Crap, yeah. Ta- talking with apostrophe. TMC. Talking mad cra- TMC. 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 With, uh, with the like Elvis logo. The yeah. TCP. Absolutely. Yeah. Talking Absolutely. Mad Crap. Man, we just came up with that. Yeah. Yeah, that's Let's how about that, Rosa? Run with do it. Only right. people that are coming on are allowed to talk. You have to talk mad crap. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be on the scoreboard at the Grizzlies. Yeah. Game, so soon. <laughs> Can we get this as our next Grind City Media pod? Uh, I hope so. We'll take a break here on the Odds Couple. When we come back, we got our picks for the top five picks in the draft. Also here, Dabo Sweeney talking about his former quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. That's all next here on the Odds Couple on Grind City Media. He had a block I've never seen in my life before. He was coming past half court, and he turned it over. Ja chased him down like LeBron. Blocked a shot off the glass. Fell down. So this kid, six foot six, he's a big kid, gets the ball and goes up to dunk it, right? Ja gets up off the floor. And blocked a and dunk. off vert and blocked another one. The Chris Vernon Show, live weekdays at noon on GrindCityMedia.com, the Grizzlies mobile app, or wherever you get your podcast. Once a week, get your basketball fix with Talkin' Grizz featuring me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, and media from around the NBA as we discuss draft topics, prospects, and more. Connect with Grind City Media on all their social channels, subscribe to Grind City Media YouTube, and follow Grind City Media on Twitter and Instagram to stay up to date with all things Grizzlies. I know everybody on this roster plays hard. We play together, and whoever lines it up with us, it doesn't really matter. Memphis versus everybody, for sure. Kawhi, oh, Justice Winslow with the takeaway. Dylan for three, down the ball it goes. Ja, breaks it in, and long! Lob, Clark! Oh! Anderson for three. Boom! That's how we fight, that's how we fight, that's how we fight. Welcome back to the Odds Couple on GrindCityMedia.com. Live from FedEx Forum and the American Home Shield Studio, here's the odds couple, Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker. Hey, welcome back to the odds couple. You know that Chris Vernon guy's got his own show. What do you think of that show, Lang? He's talking mad crap. That's <laughs> what we do. <laughs> Roser, you can see Roser on that show as well. It's yes. the Chris Vernon Show, live at noon daily, Monday through Friday. Tune in to GrindCityMedia.com, Grind City Media on YouTube, or via the official Grizzlies mobile app to catch Chris live, or download each episode daily. Subscribe at iTunes, Spotify, or SoundCloud today. Welcome back to The Odds Couple. Uh, talking NFL Draft, the NFL Draft, a whole weekend affair. Quarterback galore early in this draft. And uh, the first quarterback that's going to be taken is going to be Trevor Lawrence. He'll go to the Jacksonville Jaguars. His old coach is Dabo Sweeney. Dabo asked about, 
I don't know why. Uh, but Dabo asked about Trevor Lawrence's NBA comp. We don't have that one. We don't have we that don't one. Have that oh. You didn't send it. You only sent me six. Seriously? Yeah, you only sent one. me six. Can I send it right now? What was the answer? Yeah. Well, I know you got to send it to CJ. Just tell us what it was. No, uh, I can't because no. it's too it's too good. It's Dabo talking. It's Dabo talking. I first think, of all, I think we're at the point in the season right here where, or the point in draft season where we've talked about all this talking mad crap. We've been talking about this mad it's crap talking season for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, and we're like overthinking all these guys at this point. And now we're thinking, oh. you know, Trevor Lawrence, oh, he, yeah, there's a chance. He's soulless. He's not going to have the fire to make it in the NFL. Like, Justin Fields has yeah, epilepsy. Like, it means he can't play. Yeah, we're having this conversation about all these. We're picking them apart to the point where there's nothing left. There's just a bunch of carcasses that are going to get drafted in this thing this week. Where, in reality, these guys are all going to be great NFL players for the most part. There might be one yeah. or two as a bust, but... Like we, at some point, we gotta let these guys. Live a I think bit. this is a really good draft. I'm with you. I, th- I think yeah. I think there's a lot of really, really good players in this draft. Yeah, I, I well, I, and especially early. I, th- I think this first round's up and down. And, and I, I actually, and I actually do think I have. Th- this is the most confident I have been in a quarterback <laughs> class. Like oh, for all that. these guys, I think I think they're all going to have. I mean, Trey Lance, I don't know, but the rest of these guys, like I think they're all going to have successful careers. And we established with Trey Lance. With Trey Even Lance, down to I, Kyle Trask? I mean, I, that I, far? I don't think Kyle Trask is horrible. I, I, I mean, mean, but, I, but do, you, do you believe in the quarterbacks that far? I mean, it, he's going to go I mean, second he's round. like sixth, think, sixth quarterback. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I don't think Kyle Trask is – I think Kyle Trask will be better than uh, – like say, I think Kyle – why can't Kyle Trask be as good as Sam Darnold? I'm surprised hearing like, the things about Kellen Mond. Yeah, like, yeah, I really? Know people like Kellen, Kellen Mond. Mond. Like, I, I think a lot of these guys are good. I saw they were talking about the Falcons drafting him as a backup to, to Matt Ryan. Like, they need a backup. Yeah. Kellen Mond. Wow. All right. Well, who's Trevor Lawrence like if he were a basketball player? I think he's very similar. I think he's just, he's unbelievable. Uh, he's magical like, like MJ was. But, you know, that was my that was the best way I could describe him. I was like, you know, if you, if you pass on this guy, you're, it's like the Bulls passing on Jordan with the third pick. And um, so, anyway... Uh, I don't know uh, who I would compare him to. I have no idea uh, from a basketball standpoint, but you know, from a football standpoint, I mean, I think he's, I think he's one of a kind. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, I don't really compare him to anybody. I think he's got, I think he's got attributes of all the greats uh, that I've been around and that I've seen. It's like Jordan, Steph Curry. He said magical, combined. Like, yeah. magical like MJ was. I was like, oh, Magic Johnson. No. Yeah, MJ, Magic. No. And he no. said it'd be, you know, not passing on him would be like the Bulls passing on Jordan at three. Or you mean like the Blazers did at it two. number two? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 could have yeah. mentioned the one, the one team that, yeah. that, that actually did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that passed on him. Uh, so there you go. Trevor Lawrence, a little bit of everything from all of the greats. Let's get our five picks. <laughs> Top five picks that we have uh, in this week's NFL draft. I'll go ahead and start with Fish's five. I got Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson. I got the Mac attack going number three to the 49ers. Kyle Pitts, I think it just stays true to form with him going to the Falcons. And I'll, I'll go with Sewell going five, mainly because the Bengals need to take him. Yeah, It's a must that they take him. If they don't take him five... Well, it's the Bengals. It wouldn't shock me one bit. But it, who they should take, I think, is Sewell at number five. And I, I think that's how it'll shake out the top five. All right, Lang? I had the same top four as you. The only, the only difference I had was uh, Chase at, at five, just because I figured maybe Burrow. Because it is the Bengals? Well, yeah. <laughs> and maybe if, if, if Burrow's going to talk him into anybody, it's going to be the guy he played with at LSU yeah. and, and was really successful with. So maybe Chase goes, goes five. But I, I think those top four are pretty much set at this point. And the four to me is the one that has the most potential of getting switched around on draft night. Maybe the Falcons make a trade or whatever, but I, I think that was, that's how that top four is set. Roser. Uh, I am. I think the same as you fish uh, that obviously Lawrence Wilson, Jones, Pitts, and uh, Penny Sewell, and yeah, I'm with you. I, I think that's who they need to draft. I mean, remind you, like your quarterback Joe Burrow was out for the season because, um, like, yeah, you, you couldn't block for him. Yeah. So, like, and it wasn't like it was just that one play. No, yeah. he was getting <laughs> destroyed. So, yes, take the offensive lineman, take the tackle. CJ, uh, it's easy going. Trevor Lawrence at one. I mixed it up a little bit. Justin Fields at two because I think he's second best quarterback. Well, that would be the smoke screen of all smoke screens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. would be. If he doesn't go at two, he's 
he's going to fall like pretty far. Uh, Mac Jones, I think 49ers love them. So Mac Jones, so I, I'm pretty sure they'll take him no matter what. Cal Pitts is just too too dynamic of an option to not take there. And I'm with you guys on Sewell at five because it just it, you need somebody to protect, protect your boy. Anytime referees are stopping you, like, hey kid, you got to learn to get down. Yeah. Like you, y'all remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. When the ref was like, hey Joe, baby, good job, but you got to learn to get down. Yeah. Joe's like, I ain't never played against nobody. Like, like, you better learn, dog. You definitely gonna learn. You got to take somebody to protect the man. Yeah, so, Roser. Yeah. If, uh, I, I look, even if it's up to a Sewell. Like and they want to trade down and take Rashawn Slater. Like, bro, just take take take, take, take an offensive, get yourself an offensive lineman. Yeah. Like, get an offensive lineman. If it were to turn out that way, Justin Fields goes two. Do, yeah. do the Forty ers uh, and you as a Forty Nine er fan and as a Mac Jones fan, any contemplating? Well, maybe Wilson, Zach Wilson's he out there scares now. Scares the crap out of me. He terrifies me. I am more sure that Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, and Mac Jones are going to be good quarterbacks than I am Zach Wilson. Like, he scares the living. The biggest thing I heard about Mac Jones, I was, I was listening to the thing about that. It's a guy who does NFL films. It's like, all oh, this guy does is watch film, obviously. That's all he does <laughs> is watch film. Uh, uh, Cosell, that's all he does. And he said the one thing, that he said the biggest thing I have noticed about Zach Wilson is any time he gets pressure, he gets flustered. Like, it bothers him. Every time. Every single time. I, don't know about it. I watched it, a lot of BYU like, games last year and the year before. and uh, He played one good team last year and got beat. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't put it on him, though. I thought he was fantastic. He, the player he reminds me of is Michael Vick. Like, I, I thought because he get, he's quick to get out of the pocket and run, he can throw on the run, he has a great arm, he's fast, he, he can do everything athletically. Um, he's not as, like – outrageously athletic as Michael Vick is, but he's he's better than the play, people he's playing against. Maybe at the NFL level that doesn't translate quite as clearly as it did on the college level, but I, I loved watching him play. I think he's going to be an awesome NFL player. The problem is, man, the Jets, it's just it's like being on the Knicks. Yeah. It's just like the, the expectations are so high in that city, yeah. and it's going to be really hard for anybody yeah. to, to and reach And you do that. the whole new coaching staff thing, but, like, how many times have we been through that with the Jets? Yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly. All right, that's going to do it for our draft spectacular. The NFL draft all weekend long. Enjoy it. Win some money on the NFL draft this weekend as well. We'll be back real soon, I believe, for NBA playoffs is oh. when we'll be back. Yeah, in a couple of weeks, we'll talk some NBA playoffs. I believe that's when we will return here on The Odds Couple. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, CJ, Roser, Lang, Kimball. Thank you all for joining us uh, for all of them. I'm Fish. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again real soon here on The Odds Couple on Grind City Media. been listening to the odds couple from the american home shield studio on grindcitymedia.com tune in next week for more football handicapping with rob fisher and lang whitaker